right so it's a neural network uh, training business it has all this um, it has quite a long description at the bottom uh, describing each uh, parameter and you can train a neural network that takes a noisy sinusoid and uh, making a prediction of that waveform can change your training size a uh, training set size uh, between zero and uh, 100 so if you do 100 it should go better it's currently it's already converging at like 0 0.1 i don't know if you can go lower than that but let's try the a uh, 100 data points as you can see we're using two a uh, hidden layers the size of the first one is five the size of the second one is three and uh, we added noise to, to the system and yeah, now it's doing even better at uh, 0 0.07 so it kind of does converge and then the idea is that you can see when increasing the noise our performance should uh, drop in theory well it would definitely not get to that small number yeah it's only getting down to 0.2 or so it still kind of looks like it converges but uh, but yes the number is much higher Okay, if you increase the noise level even further, you can change your optimizer and your activation function. There's some standard options there. And how the loss function is being calculated means squared errors, standard. Try that again with even increased noise. And yeah, we're only getting up to 0.3. And with a reduced noise level, the training loss goes much uh, lower to about 0 0.05 and yes uh, there's a better convergence there but this is pretty much uh, it for this tool there's a lot of uh, explanations and how you could potentially improve the performance explaining the different uh, different parameters but yeah, if you have any ideas on how to improve this uh, or what am i missing do let me know we do need like a standard the disclaimer that we are using GPT. Ah, so this is a Flask application, but we're actually not sending anything to the cloud at the moment, to to my server at the moment. Just it, it's um, just relying on the JavaScript alone at this stage. We increase the the size of the hidden layers see what difference does that make seem to converge uh, faster yes yeah, sometimes this will be just taking more resources but would not necessarily converge any any better there's no need just trying a different optimizer as well uh, other activation functions uh, i don't think they work really well for sinusoid yeah, you can see it doesn't converge at all with a uh, relative a uh, activation function why it's jumping around like that let's try it again with a different optimizer it's doing this jumpy business and um, it essentially means that potentially the learning rate is um, too low or too high i don't know yeah we increased the the learning rate a bit and now it's actually a bit better but yeah didn't quite converge well it get to point 0.1 instead of uh, point 0.01 or something yeah, if you restart the page it will go to the default uh, settings in theory using um, sgd stochastic gradient descent yeah there's a, a problem with um, repeatability of all these systems so it should be simple but yes there's uh, some randomness in it so so it's essentially impossible to reproduce the results between uh, runs every time you run it you get a slightly different answer so i'm not entirely sure well i mean there is noise uh, in it as well so but even if we remove noise you get the point the 075 we train again get the uh, 0.073 so a slightly different number but uh, uh, yeah it kind of didn't quite converge uh, very well not sure what's up with that okay we need the wsgi file to add uh, this as a flask application 
can again just uh, remind that to myself that uh, again there's not uh, much uh, happening in the back end actually nothing happening in the, is uh, happening in the back end a just doing it as a flask application just in case uh, later we might need to add anything or should we just change it to JavaScript alone and um, keep it flask uh, interior flask application could have been uh, used to send uh, the performance so every time you train it could have been uh, sending the final uh, training loss uh, to the cloud for storage to display like a table of uh, performance for different parameters so I need to store all the parameters and the final uh, training loss value mean square error where you have about uh, 10 15 uh, flask applications or so uh, running on the site some of them obviously the blogs are just text and uh, images uh, yeah pretty sure this will be a flask application uh, let me know if you tried it out there's a bit of a lag there obviously especially if you scroll for too long yeah i don't know if there will be some uh, simple way of uh, preventing that from happening what do we have in the style css is it being um ignored yeah we'll have trouble with this uh, body info do we have enough info yeah i'm pretty sure we need this for the flask application uh, yeah there's always a problem of uh, styling should we just not have it yeah we don't like it. it's checking uh, for minimum width and things like that it wasn't working quite well anyway now we have a style sheet for the whole project as well it's probably a better idea not to uh, have two of them i don't like it anyway it's not great is it you know, the size that goes first canvas i uh, can just add the maximum width we use the uh, copilot for this and yeah we want to do it uh, with being html we want this to be pixels percentage percentage is nice yeah i can be messing around with this forever question really is how to make sure the controls and the two charts always uh, fit the one page it generated the css we don't really want to use css is this so in the container i'm pretty sure it's already in the container is it no it is not controls and charts yeah we don't want to do the media thing we don't need the body because it's in there um because we have another css for the whole project we'll take care of it okay not getting far we call it something else it doesn't really work won't make much difference if we have it the uh, charts <laughs> yeah quick way of solving this can we add the minimum size for the two charts to be 200 pixels yeah we could add the maximum height to be a third of the screen can we have the maximum height of each chart to be one third of the screen uh, yeah this is, uh, this is much better <laughs> and we don't need a fancy css file yeah i don't like how these uh, numbers they appear but that's uh, that looks like on the pretty sure it won't look, look on the mobile like this i have a feeling yeah, it should be fine hey uh, where's the javascript don't think we need a border color we have uh, colors for a project that we could use why is it weird like that to test uh, uh, how it would look like eventually because why is this our css is not being used at the moment and this style css a copy relative path i think this uh, works uh, when deployed 
uh, this uh, folder reference to style CSS works when the application is deployed, but why isn't it working when uh, testing uh, locally? Yeah, when you testing locally, the root directory is often the directory when the index.html file is located. Okay. Uh, only the one application it's hard to test locally isn't it yeah just have to deal for it deal with it for now the current they uh, removed the uh, usage they now just say usage limits may apply they removed the uh, what used to, used to be 40 prompts uh, per hour no per three hours I don't remember okay why do we have so much in the flask app 